back to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make manestra soup. Manestra soup is basically a tomato-based soup that has some orzo pasta in it. It's, it's comforting and delicious, and is the perfect example of how a few very basic and inexpensive ingredients come together in like 30 minutes to create a heartwarming meal that's ready in no time. Again, I said it's gonna be ready in under 30 minutes. You can make this on any busy day of the week. Kids love it, adults love it. You could use it as is and serve it as a vegetarian soup, or you could serve it with your favorite protein. Little uh, mini meatballs go great in this. As you will see in the end, you'll know why. I don't have any on hand right now, but I have served this with meatballs, a little bit of chicken. You could even put some um, leftover roasted chicken in this, or like I said, serve it as is. Let's go over the ingredients so we can start. In the pot over here, I have an onion that's finely chopped with some olive oil that's cooking over medium heat. I have some olive oil, some crushed oregano, black pepper, crushed red pepper flakes, which are optional, some salt, feta cheese, which we're gonna use at the end, and that's also optional, some uncooked orzo pasta, water, these are two cans of diced tomatoes that I've pureed. We're gonna need a tablespoon of tomato paste, four garlic cloves, and that's it. So the onions and the olive oil need to cook over medium heat for about 10 minutes or until the onions are really nice and soft and golden. While that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and grate these garlic cloves. So I get questions in the comments why I don't use crushed tomatoes. I like to buy as much of my groceries as I can from Costco. And Costco, because we're a big family, we're a family of seven, so we always need big quantities of things. And I use lots and lots of canned tomatoes. The canned tomatoes that Costco carries are the diced variety. And because we all prefer a smooth tomato sauce in whatever food we're eating, I always like to puree them. So that's a step that I take. If you like a more rustic soup, then you, don't, you do not have to puree the tomatoes. You could leave them diced the way they are. That's actually pretty traditional. We just like to do it because we have picky eaters around here. So the onions are looking good. The onions are nice and soft. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the garlic and I'm just gonna mix it in and it just takes a few seconds for it to be done. You do not wanna cook it too long because it's already grated. Next, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of tomato paste. And I'm just gonna mix it in the onions and the garlic and the oil. That is good. Now I'm gonna add the pureed tomatoes. I'm also gonna add a little pinch of sugar just because the tomatoes are so acidic. You, you do not have to do this, you can leave it out or you can substitute with a little bit of honey. Just a half teaspoon. A nice big teaspoon of dried oregano. And before this starts popping all over the place, I'm gonna go in and add some water. I'm not gonna add all the water because there is still some uh, puree tomato in my blender and I do not wanna let it go to waste, so I am gonna transfer the water into the blender so we can rinse all that goodness out. I'm also gonna season with some salt. I'm gonna start with half a teaspoon, and then later on we're gonna taste and see if it needs more. A little pinch of crushed red pepper flakes for heat. Not traditional, but I do like a little bit of heat in my food. Some black pepper, this is all to taste. As much or as little as you like the remaining water. I'm gonna bring this to a boil and then I'm gonna go in and add my orzo pasta. Then I'm gonna let this cook until the orzo pasta is nice and tender. It's gonna take about eight to 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna taste it, see if it needs a little more salt, adjust the seasoning if needed, and then it's going to be ready to serve. So once the pasta is al dente, that's gonna take anywhere between eight to 10 minutes. You wanna make sure you take it off of the heat because it is gonna to continue to cook in that hot, hot broth and you do not want it to get to melt or to get really extra mushy. Once it's done, go ahead and taste it. And I did taste it and I added a little bit more salt. So I added a little bit more salt and then I also finally chopped some fresh mint. You can do parsley or even oregano. Sprinkle it on top, give it a nice stir, put it in a big bowl, and I like to sprinkle some feta cheese on it, so I did do that. If you wanna keep it vegan, obviously leave the feta out and just toast some bread to soak up that delicious tomato broth. It is time to go in and take a bite. Mmm. oh my God. If you've ever tried my Uvetsi, I made different versions of it with meatballs, with chicken, with lamb. This tastes just like that in a soup form. The feta adds a nice creaminess to this and it just tastes absolutely amazing. 
You guys are going to want to give this one a try from start to finish. I think it was less than 30 minutes that the whole thing was ready and on the table, ready to be served. Toast up some bread and serve it alongside this and enjoy every single bite. Head on over to the website, dimitrimsdishes.com to print this recipe. And one more thing, so we just use a tablespoon of this tomato paste. I, this is a can, some people like to use the tube and that's fine, you can just put the tube back in the refrigerator. However, once you open a tin of uh, tomato paste, you cannot store it in the refrigerator like that. Just transfer the tomato paste into a freezer safe bag and flatten it out and then just break off pieces as you need them. It will stay fresh in the freezer for months. We used to do this all the time at the bakery. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. There are gonna be more tips and tricks, if I can think of any, on the written recipe on the website. Again, thank you guys so much and I will see you all next time. Yes, us.